A blessed evening to all of you and also to our brothers and sisters who are joining us through this uh, worship by uh, live stream. I think the most significant words we find and most quoted words of Jesus we find in the gospel today is what repeated very often and the truth will set you free our seminarians here in philosophy one of the main concerns of philosophy is precisely to train the mind to know the truth now what is the truth veritas no. and uh, it is a hot issue also to, especially in our times here in the Philippines no. especially with the proliferation of the so-called uh, fake news no. I've read two articles international articles pointing out this concern in the Philippines now now, two international uh, newspapers discussing this concern of the Philippines about the, the so-called issue of fake news, which is, of course, a direct contradiction to what is the truth. One of the uh, simplest understanding of truth if you look at the dictionary, is the agreement of the facts, the statement we make, and the facts that exist there in reality. If you say today that here in Christ the King it is raining, it's raining today. Of course not. No? Because the reality is not. No? Maybe it's raining in other parts of the world, yes but not in Christ the King now, no? It doesn't agree, my statement doesn't agree with the, with the reality. Mabaiti yung anak ko. Eh, o matalino yung anak ko. Eh, puro namang failure. Bagsak. That is not a reality. No? That is not truthful. But again, now the, the problem that we are facing about truth is that we have been, maybe the, the issues connected with the truth is that at times we, we are so biased with our perception or maybe because of what would be at stake when we profess otherwise so we continue to say untruthful things because of my personal interests and you know that we perpetuate the lies so this is a very important lesson today from Jesus himself and the truth will make you free, will set you free. Now, going beyond this simple definition of truth, we find a, a higher form and understanding of truth from the teaching of Jesus Christ. And what is that? That he himself is the embodiment of the truth in uh, the gospel today we find for example the uh, if you remain in my word he said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free in other words for us Christians the source the true source of truth is Jesus Christ and we find that in the scriptures, in his teachings. That's why he challenges us to see and 
relish His Word where we find the truth. But for example, the truth about Jesus Christ that His contemporaries were not able to recognize is His own identity, for example. His identity being the Son of God. They could not accept. They could not understand that. But Jesus insisted in this, that He is the truth, meaning humanity would find its salvation only in Jesus Christ and no other. And that is the great truth that Jesus is insisting now, that in the end, our adherence to Jesus, our say, our uh, yes to Jesus, is ultimately not for the sake of just professing this, but to this profession of faith in Him, in Jesus, brings us to the truth of our salvation. And if we, for us Christians, His teachings about love, for example, and the gospel values, these are the truths that should guide us in our journey in this life that will lead us to Him and to heaven. The first reading is a beautiful example of one who has, I mean, of persons who have captured the truth that is embedded in their faith. The, uh, the example of these three young men who stood their ground and not worship the false gods because they knew that the, their God is their true is the true God and they maintained their position their profession of faith of worshiping only the God of Israel even in the face of threat and indeed in the end, we, we know that they were saved because they put their trust in the true God. This is the mystery of freedom in Christian faith. Freedom in Christian faith is not, is precisely allowing God to be our guide because this God will lead us to true freedom. Now, maybe paradoxical that uh, sometimes we have the idea that freedom is that you are not constrained by anyone or anything. Yung wala, that I can do anything that I like. Unfortunately, Many times, those who do not have moorings, moral foundations, for example, that would guide them, o yung mga taong walang kinatatakutan, walang kinikilalang authority, unfortunately, they end up being slaves of their own selves, of their own selfishness, and evil inclinations. The contrary is true. One who has God and Christ are truly free as shown in the readings today, in the first reading, beautifully expressed in the first reading. They feared God and they recognized God and they were truly free. And that is also the gift of Christ. One who adheres to Christ. One who allows Christ to guide us. Truly 
that person is truly free. As I've said, it is paradoxical, but it is this, the beauty and the joy and the peace that it brings to be on the side of Christ, on the side of the truth, because truly it will make us free. Professing in Christ, for ex our faith in Christ, necessarily leads us, for example, to value what He values, the value of God at the center of our lives, the value of love for, to God and for others. And it is precisely in this exercise and the, of these values where one becomes truly a happy, fulfilled, content person, truly a free person. As we come to this, towards the end of this Lenten journey, we are reminded of this, no? our, that our God who gives us, who wants us to be free, is Himself the source of our freedom. It is when we are guided and formed by Jesus Christ, His Word, His values, that we become truly free. Amen.